Modi Carey, who just graduated, as I said yesterday, and uh, she is a senior student uh, from NYU Shanghai, uh, originally studying in social sciences with a focus on psychology. And she will be sharing how she used poetry to uh, hone her language skills during this uh, very challenging time. So, Modi, it's your turn. Thank you, Yanyue. Um, I'll begin sharing the screen. Um, so as Yanyue said, I'll be sharing about my experience using poetry to uh, hone my Chinese skills during this um, rather unique time that we're living in, to put it mildly. So I'll just want to start out by saying briefly my own experience with this pandemic and where I have been, um, from, from which places I've been participating in this new kind of learning. So um, I was on a leave last semester and I was at home in New York. So I was really eagerly awaiting the chance to come back to Shanghai for the spring semester. And it goes without saying that that didn't go as planned at first. Um, after uh, about a month and a half of flights getting canceled and delayed, um, I decided to come back to Shanghai on March 23rd. I had an overnight layover of 22 hours in the Tokyo Narita Airport where I realized one of the silver linings of distance learning is that even sitting in a dark um, airport lounge at three in the morning, I could still watch um, asynchronous lectures and submit homework. After that, once I got to Shanghai, I did 14 days of isolated quarantine in a hotel. And I realized again that the nice thing about synchronous classes is that even in a hotel where I legally was not allowed to have contact with anybody else in person, I could still join my classmates every week. And my professors would kindly check up on me and ask me how the experience was. And now, um, where I sit now is with uh, the host family I'm living with in Tangqiao and Pudong. And I've continued to adjust to the online learning here, um, especially when I first arrived, since I had gotten used to a New York Times schedule for my classes and then had to flip everything by 12 hours. So why poetry for me? Um, I took a post-advanced Chinese class this semester called Discovering Contemporary China Through Documentary Film. And when we got to unit four, um, our unit was Liu Dong Renko, floating population. But our teacher, Bilausha, took a rather unique approach and she um, used the lens of migrant worker poetry to um, examine and learn about the lives of migrant workers in China. And at the very beginning of the unit, she mentioned to us somewhat in passing that uh, our unit project at the end of the unit would be to write a poem in Chinese. And this was kind of daunting at first because um, I don't write poetry often. And when I try to write poetry in English, I usually, um, I get in my own way and I spend so much time, you know, trying to think what's the perfect word to write that I just end up not writing anything. Uh, but nevertheless, this kind of planted the seed and got me thinking about writing poetry in Chinese. And sooner or later, I was going to have to do it um, as an assignment. Um, our first assignment in this unit was to translate a poem by a migrant worker into English as a way to kind of dip our toes, so to speak, in the water. So I was really moved by the poem that I translated as well as the poems that my classmates translated. And um, I realized that, you know, you could you could write a poem and never directly touch on exactly the topic um, that you were trying to say, and yet you could really communicate your meaning, which is something that I knew about poetry in English, but just in the context of Chinese, I had never really considered. So one day I had something on my mind, it was really weighing on me, and I got back to the apartment and I thought, why don't I write a poem about it? in Chinese. I have, to, I have to do it sooner or later, even though I've got a couple weeks until the deadline. Maybe this could be a means of catharsis. Um, so I sat down, I wrote it, and the words just kind of flowed. And I was pretty surprised by that because, uh, as I said, when I try to write poetry in English, I really tend to get in my own way. But somehow, switching to my non-native language of Chinese um, seemed to make things click. Um, 
So then began the editing process. So I sent a WeChat message to my teacher, Bilausha, and I told her that I had just written my poem. And she said, well, why don't you share it with me? So um, she offered to take a look at it and we used Google Docs. And as you can see here, she made some suggestions for word usage and structure. And at the same time, she also gave me the feeling like I had written something halfway decent and, you know, maybe should try my hand uh, even more at writing poems. So more poems, yes, more poems. So I kept writing poems to the point that I actually would procrastinate other assignments that were actually due um, within maybe 12 hours. And I would say, no, just I'll just write one more poem. I'll just write one more poem. Um, and I really, I really started to enjoy it. And anytime I wrote a poem, I would tell Bilausha and she would always welcome me to share it with her. And she would help me workshop some poems on Google Docs. And I, I remember there were a few that I was quite reluctant to share because um, I just, I, I thought they weren't that good. I thought they were more like a stream of consciousness. Um, but Bilausha really helped me feel like it was okay to not write a perfect poem. And that really helped me set the perfectionism aside and just write and know that in any case, even if it started out as, you know, not so great, she would help me workshop it to be something meaningful and what I intended it to be. So the, the first poem I wrote was okay. Um, it was well written, I suppose, in a technical sense of grammar and word usage, but it was very direct. And one day I had an office hour with Bi Laoshi where she brought some other Chinese poems for me to read and for us to look at together. And from, from reading those, I realized I got some inspiration for how I could use metaphor and poetry to express what I wanted to say in Chinese without actually ever um, bringing up the thing directly. So I wrote a poem about a person in my life who, simply put, I formerly had a great relationship with and then now feel somewhat estranged from. And at the beginning of the poem, as you see here, um, I intentionally had a few stanzas um, that were really directly addressing the person and kind of really explicitly said what it was about. And after I sat down with Bilausha, I realized that actually I could just totally cut um, the first two stanzas of the poem. And in the process, it made the poem, I think, more accessible to other people in the sense that it was more generalizable. In the beginning, I addressed the person by name and said who I was talking about. So it was very clear it was a poem for me about something in my life. And then after, after cutting that first part and after changing the title, I realized, um, you know, writing this poetry maybe could be not just for me, but also to share with others. Um, so how, how did this help with, with language skills? So, I mean, the obvious, the obvious part is the, the word usage and the grammar, the technical stuff. So when I worked with Bilausha, she would provide me, you know, really pointed feedback and clarify things. One of the things I think I ran into the most, especially with poems, is that, you know, just like in English, we have we have words where there's a lot of ways to express one thing and which word you use really depends on the context and the nuance. So in workshopping these poems, I really got to dive deeper into language um, and get a better understanding of some vocabulary. And I've studied other languages before and I took I took Spanish up to a college level, but I, I never got a chance to write a poem in Spanish. And in retrospect, I think that really made a difference in the level that I reached in that language because um, in writing poetry in Chinese, I found I expanded my lexicon to be able to talk about not just things that you learn in a textbook, like have you eaten and um, what are you doing this afternoon? Um, but things, things that were really personal to me. And that before writing poems, I found that my Chinese vocabulary was limited in that regard. I did not, you know, have, I would, I would be talking fluently and then want to say something really personal or something about, you know, my own life and realize I didn't have the language to do so. And now I think because of poetry, I do. Um, and that's the thing I think about writing poetry, especially in a time like this, is that it's a way to express yourself um, and achieve some kind of catharsis while actually still being productive. 
and um, you know, in the end, sometimes making a product that you can even share with others. Um, I mean, I've definitely written some poems that are more like word vomit and they're not, they're for me. They're just for me to get something off my chest, but um, others I've, you know, I've, I've shared with people and I feel like actually I'm able to access some ideas and thoughts more clearly and more lucidly when I'm writing in Chinese than when I'm trying to approach them in English. Um, and that's why I call it productive catharsis, because I think that you can really make and accomplish something while also attending to those emotional needs. And especially during this time, it's a valuable practice because for most things, we have to put our feelings in a box on a shelf and sit down and get the work done and then go open that box later. But with poetry, it's quite the opposite. You have to take the box and put it right next to you and open it up in order to um, be able to write a poem. So I'll just leave you with um, this poem, which at now is kind of like a souvenir for me of the whole process. I look at it and I don't just I don't just read the poem, but I think of, you know, all the work that came before it and how valuable it's been as an experience to me. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this was the poem that had all the exposition at the beginning that I just cut. And then um, after looking at it several times, after having Bilaush's help in workshopping, it became something that I was um, fairly happy with. So uh, yes, that's that's my story about using poetry and thank you all so much for listening. Uh, that's, that's wonderful. Modi, do you, do you actually mind reading that poem or? Oh, you... yeah, sure, sure. I'll read it. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. One second. Okay. <laughs> 我常常为以前的你举办家乡的葬礼歌颂，我曾经最好的朋友，也常常为后来的你制作家乡的无度瓦，列举你所害我的方法。Thank you, thank you, Modi. Thanks. That was that was very beautiful, and um, I can really echo when you said um, that when you are really into writing poems, you kind of want to push all the other deadlines. And that's really something you uh, actively want to do. Uh, and that it's good to hear that it's also uh, catharsis. It gives you this productive uh, kind of feeling during this very challenging time. And I know it's, it's very hard to write poems in, um, in a second language. Um, so it's great to hear that you get all the encouragement and all the feedback you get uh, from Bill Ash, who is actually also <laughs> listening right now. So uh, we'll, we'll come back to uh, hear any questions or any other feedback that the audience have while listening to this poem.